Okay. Hi, my name is Sophie Rossman and I'm an intern with the 2020 International Climate Action Challenge. Today, we're talking with Irasu and Chris of Remap Pet Beds from Texas. We're really excited to share their story with you about their challenge and starting their business. All right, so if you guys could please introduce yourself and tell us your 90 day challenge goal. Okay, hi, I'm Irasu. Um, I'm a designer and yeah, basically the idea was to create a circular business model and that's where Chris came in. Um, Oh <laughs> uh, yes, my name is Chris Mokin and I'm based in San Antonio. I've been working the last couple of years in the solid waste and circular economy industry. And uh, part of what we worked on this project is just a, an offshoot of some of our earlier work recycling mattresses here in San Antonio. Great. Um, why did you guys want to start or launch an initiative and also partic uh, participate in this particular challenge? Well, basically how it all started is that um, I joined the climate action, um, the, I mean, the climate leader reality thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the Al Gore group. And I did that training um, last July and I was super excited about it and I wanted to do something. And then I stumbled upon uh, Joan posting something on the reality hub and I thought, this is awesome because I want to do something big, but I don't know where to start, right? So um, I signed in. I figured, you know, I'll find someone in the way because it was supposed to be a challenge for teams, right? And it was just me, but I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, because I needed to have a, a partner or a team member on this challenge, I started reaching out and then um please join them because i i am part also of my local uh climate chapter for the climate reality but they were all you know in their different um you know projects and you know the the climate um that that uh project has its own agenda so it didn't really work for me so yeah i started reaching out started reaching out um to other uh, circularity related um, websites and that's where I met Chris and we started talking and yeah that's how it all started so it, it has been really cool like um, for me uh, it's it helped me you know like uh, get focused because I really didn't know what to do yeah <laughs> So that was a little bit about your challenge, but if you have any particular ups and downs that you experienced during the 90 days or anything about kind of your experience? Well, um, for me personally, yes, it's been a huge challenge because I also have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that can be a challenge. But for our project, um, so we started sort of um, trying to give life to new products based on what Chris had started doing before, uh, she ha he had created in a nonprofit to um, divert mattresses, you know, from the landfill, and he wanted to create some products with that. And he had made um, some prototype beds, uh, bed beds uh, before that. And um, he wanted to make new products to make them more circular and to get started on that. But our main problem so far has been actually our supply chain it's been crazy um and that has been like an up and down getting uh, material samples um quoting that's been insane and also on the other side social media it's been um a huge challenge for us you know time related um yeah i don't know if you want to uh, add up to that chris i'm pretty sure you, you have your other yeah, sure. I'll expand on it just a little bit, just to touch base on uh, the history of how we got started working with mattresses. So I, I formed a nonprofit in 2017 to recycle mattresses in San Antonio, Texas. And essentially, you just deconstruct old mattresses. You pull out the steel, the cotton, the foam, the ticking. You then bale those materials and sell them to manufacturers to be reused. However, the, the amount of revenue generated by selling those materials it doesn't cover your cost to operate, and that's why a lot of organizations do it as a nonprofit. So 
so that they can reduce the amount of money they charge for people to drop off a mattress to be recycled. And one of the things we wanted to do was to make more of our own products from the materials we salvage. And that's where the idea to make a pet bed from old memory foam mattresses came. And that's what we've been working on for uh, this challenge. And as uh, Irazu mentioned, the one of the bigger challenges has really just been getting our supply chain set because initially we wanted to work with these older mattresses that we could get locally here in the community. But the problem we kept running into or started running into is the fact that these mattresses are all made differently by different companies. And so the thickness of the foam would change, the dimensions of the mattress would change. Therefore, to make a standardized product, it became a little challenging. And from there, we decided we'd reach out to manufacturers across the U.S. and figure out how we could source all the materials to make our own pet beds that would be as much as possible made from recycled content. So, for example, using shredded foam that's been recycled for the cushioning, using 100% organic cotton or 100% polyester for the covers. Uh, just trying to build all those partnerships because you can't just pick up a phone call someone and that product gets made. It just doesn't work that way. So, making something that's not only cost effective, but then it can also easily be recycled at the end of its life has taken us a little while. We're getting close to the ends and we should hopefully have something here in the next couple months that we can put on the market that will be cost competitive and easy for us to ship back and forth so that we can sell it to a customer. And then when the customer has reached the end of the life of that dog bed, they can then send it back to us through the mail. When we send the new product to them, they can just use the same reusable packaging that we'll send them, such as a vacuum seal bag to put the old uh, dog bed in and then ship us back the new one. Uh, so we're, we're really excited about finally getting all those pieces to come together. And like I said, hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll have something that'll be ready to go. But that's it's been a serious challenge because we initially made something that was way too expensive. I mean, it's close to what you memory foam pet beds from Casper, one of those other companies. And we wanted to drop the price so that it would be in that more typical price range of 30 to $70 that most consumers are used to. That way we can get your average consumer to participate in the circular economy. Because without that additional participation, you're really just leaving it for people that have a lot of wealth. And that's just not, not going to make a big enough change fast enough. Yeah, that's a really important point. I'm glad you brought that up. So let's talk about kind of some of your numbers. How many team members did you guys have at the start and how many do you have now? <laughs> well, uh, we didn't grow that much. It was just me in the beginning and now there's two of us, but you know, it's working Perfect. out. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> and then partnerships, how many partnerships did you develop through the challenge? Well, um, so far we developed one with the SA Human Society for uh, donating our beds because um, part of our idea is obviously to help out the community and to help out, you know, pet to me. So um, we want to donate one bed for every 10 that we sell. But, you know, since we're starting right now, we decided to donate the prototypes that we're making, you know, because you, you do have to make prototypes, you know, tests and everything. So that, that has been our first start, you know, donating um, some bed beds with them. That's great. So what impact has your initiative had so far, both numerically and also just generally? I guess you can answer that one first. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. So for the beds that we made through this project, we recycled about uh, five or six mattresses ranging from queens to kings, and they all just so happen to be Tempur-Pedic mattresses, just the way it worked out, which is kind of weird in its own little way. Uh, but that was probably close to about three to 400 pounds of material that we were able to divert from the landfill. Mm -hmm. And since we were working with these memory foam mattresses, we were able to recycle just about all of them with the exception of the exterior covering, which is known as the ticking in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we get this larger product up and going, we should be able to help divert a, a much larger amount of materials, which we're really excited about. And I'll just add maybe a couple more partners on there. I know when we submitted the report, it was probably before these sort of partnerships are more solidified, but with some of our manufacturing partners, I consider them to be good partners because it's really hard to find a company that wants to work with someone on such a, a bold and, and strange idea. Because when I first mentioned this idea of making a circular economy pet bed, people just look at me like, I'm, or look at us like we're crazy. And are like, we don't do that kind of thing here, or we're not interested. We just want to have a global 
customer. Um, so I, I do consider them to be good partners. And we've also found some um, interesting, unique groups to work with, especially in the Carolinas, like the Carolina Textile District and the, um, the Industrial Commons. And they've been some really good people to work with as far as helping direct us and direct our efforts. And the same here in Texas, there's a group called Stitch. Uh, Texas, and they help people that are trying to get their own clothing lines or some other material like that. They help you kind of navigate the prototyping and uh, the sourcing of materials and manufacturers because it's a lot to take on by yourself to just start cold calling all of these manufacturers, whereas having that inside industry partner who can help you out is very beneficial. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I did forget one. For the impact build, they have been helping us out a little. Mm -hmm. They have, yes. Yeah, that's, that's a good great. point. And just to elaborate, the Impact Guild is a local co-working space here in San Antonio that's focused on businesses that have a passion for sustainability or co-op, cooperative okay. formations. Uh, so it's a little different from your typical co-working space because they everyone there has sort of the same social leaning. Yeah. It's a, a nice little area here in town. That's yeah. great. Yeah, they started helping us out in social media and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> that is true. So which parts of the challenge were most helpful to you guys? Well, I would definitely say the workbook and well, having the weekly meetings was really good. I really enjoyed that because, you know, you get to hear from a lot of people from all around the world. And when you're sharing your idea they give you ideas back and you know it's it, that is really a really good thing and the workbook you know definitely because it just helps you with the guidelines um yeah i think basically those two i would have loved having more contact with uh the mentors but mm -hmm. um yeah i i i don't know i only got to have one meeting so yeah that didn't help that much <laughs> Yeah. And I would love to hear what your next steps are with this project. Well, we are currently building our Kickstarter, actually. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to finish doing, you know, getting all costs and defining everything, you know. And uh, the idea, if everything works out, is to get our Kickstarter going in January. So hopefully. <laughs> share that with you guys yeah so that's great awesome project started <laughs> so you mentioned kickstarter but what are some other ways that people can support you or join you now well we would accept any yeah, right now help. probably the, the best way yeah uh, one good way is just to go visit the site and just sign up so you can keep you know getting reminders about where we are and just mm -hmm. keep seeing the progress. We constantly put up new videos about the, the samples we're getting and we're very transparent about the materials and the partners we're working with. Uh, so yeah, just visiting the website at remat.pet, which is R-E-M-A-T dot P-E-T, the, is a good way to start. And from there, you know, we're, we're always looking to work with other organizations that might be doing similar work and also to help support them and, you know, to continue to building additional partnerships. And I know after we get these pet beds going, we do have the goal to bring on some additional products as well. So if anyone kind of likes this idea, we'd love to hear more about your thoughts or your kind of projects and see how we might be able to work together as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, we need uh, people to get the word out because that's mm -hmm. how we think that, you know, we get more interest and help and yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, someone knows anyone famous or <laughs> has any great PR contacts or anything such as that, yeah, please reach out. We would definitely love that help. For sure. <laughs> so one last question. What is your advice for others who want to make an impact? Well, I guess um, definitely the team thing, like reach out to people. Um, if you have an idea, don't, you know, don't stop just because you don't find someone to listen to you easily. Like for me, you know, I know that it was the, the challenge that pushed me into reaching out to people, but 
it is what you need to do. You need to reach out and tell your idea and maybe someone will come along and say, hey, you're not that crazy. I have an idea too. And, you know, luckily for me, that was Chris. But, um, you know, I think that that's the way you have to get started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think another really important thing to remember is that uh, it's really hard to do something by yourself and in one little silo trying to, to tackle everything, especially if you're trying to start a business. It's a lot of work and a lot of effort, and it really helps if you have some teammates and you have to get out of your own comfort shell and really reach out to people and engage them. And I know for myself, I, I was an introvert when I first got started, and now I'm much more extroverted just because it's, it's a necessity. People like working with other people, uh, mm -hmm. so you, you really need to be able to build those, those good relationships, and it, it does take an extra amount of work to do that. Yeah. And, and I'd also just caution everybody and let them know that, you know, most businesses and entrepreneurs fail for a reason. And that's because doing these innovative things is kind of hard and it takes a lot of work and a lot of consistent effort. So mm -hmm. just be wary of how much you're taking on. Yeah, that's yeah. great advice. Thank you guys so much for sharing your story with us. For those of you who want to find out more about how to do a challenge yourself or in your community, please visit www.climateactionchallenge.net. Thank you.